Internal Revenue Service IRS tax news. New school year reminder to educators. Maximum educator expense deduction rises to $300 in 2022. Holy moly. Surely that'll keep up with inflation. Not. But first an attempt at a joke. Poor President Biden can't even get a word in edgewise. Maybe he couldn't get a word in edgewise. So the best way to get something done, if you, if you hold near and dear to you that you, uh... What's that, Phil? No, nobody's cutting him off or anything. And you're going to be cutting him off completely. I'd um, like to be able to... Anyway. He's up there at the podium all alone, the audience patiently waiting. I'm, we're waiting to get a lot done. And the poor guy still can't get a word in edgewise. Okay, um, hang on. Uh, sorry. Oh, sing me, Miss Kim. You know, Phil, I wanted a fairy tale ending. It's like a fairy tale. Why? Because I heard they were more lucky than a rabbit's foot. Lucky? How can they be lucky? However, it seems most fairies don't have a tail. My tail! Where's my tail? Making it difficult to acquire one. I know just where you can get one. IR 2022-148, August 10th, 2022, Washington. As the new school year begins, the Internal Revenue Service reminds teachers and other educators that they'll be able to deduct up to $300 out-of-pocket classroom expenses for 2022 when they file their federal income tax return next year. Now, this is an interesting uh, deduction if you are a teacher, or if you have teacher clients or teachers in your family or educators in your family, as I do, then you're probably familiar uh, with this deduction. It was 250 before. The thing that's interesting about it is, is that it is a deduction geared towards a specific industry, which is kind of unusual. And at the time it was put in place a long time ago when it was initially put in place, it was a testament to the power of the teachers union in essence because that 250 was actually significant at that point but then it wasn't increased for a long period of time until now so it's still a fairly you know less impressive dollar amount of the deduction but the general idea from a practical standpoint would be note that usually if you're a sole proprietorship you're not a w-2 employee but a sole proprietor then you get to deduct the expenses that you have although you have the burden of having to pay the self-employment tax basically double the employee and the employer share so you got some pros and cons on that side and then if you're a w-2 employee the idea is that the employer is going to be taking care of most of your expenses therefore you don't get to deduct them uh in that case but then they put them to the special kind of rule for teachers which was uh the, it was 250 they raised it up to an astounding 300 dollars now that you can deduct the $300 if you're a qualified educator. And so anytime you're doing a tax return, in essence, for a qualified educator, you wanna basically keep that in mind because it's likely that they will be able to take that deduction because it's a fairly small dollar amount. In other words, if they're spending money on you know equipment that would qualify for this deduction for their job, then being special in the teacher area because the teachers union pushed this through way back when they finally increased the dollar amount you could deduct the three hundred dollars basically above the line so you always want to uh, keep that in mind in other words it's not a standard deduction it's a deduction that you could take even if you're not itemizing okay so this is the first time the annual limit has increased since the special educator expense deduction was enacted in 2002 so it was in 2002 that the might of the teachers union went in and had this special deduction just for teachers, which had the 250, which was pretty significant dollar amount at that point. But now what are we at? 2022 and they haven't increased it. And so now they're increasing it a little bit. So it looks a little bit more impressive. So for tax years 2002 through 2021, the limit was $250 per year. The limit will rise uh, in $50 increments in future years based on inflation adjustments. So for 2022, an eligible educator can deduct up to $300 of qualified expenses. If they're married and file a joint return with another eligible educator, the limit rises to $600. So that it's like $300 per you know person if there's two people then you would have the six hundred dollars because they're both educators but in this situation not more than 300 for each spouse 
So who qualifies? Educators can claim this deduction even if they take the standard deduction. So even if you're not itemizing, in other words, because it's an above the line, or possibly you could call it a Schedule 1 uh, deduction. Eligible educators include anyone who is kindergarten through 12th grade, uh, 12th teacher, instructor, counselor, principal, or aide in a school for at least 900 hours during the school year. Both public and private school educators qualify. What's deductible? Educators can deduct the unreimbursed costs of books, supplies, other materials used in the classroom. So I'm sure, you know, I know the educators that I've in my family has probably spent a, you know, a lot more than that amount on, on stuff as do many people in other fields, by the way. It's not just educators that spend money on stuff that's work-related, but, but educators clearly oftentimes spend money on stuff for their education and, and whatnot, and so those would, would be the kind of things that you would think would be the de deductible. In other words, the kind of things that you would think would be deductible if you were a sole proprietorship uh, in general, the things that are going towards your job. So equipment, including computer equipment, software and services, COVID-19, uh, protective items to stop the spread of the disease in the classroom. So if you bought, they added that stuff. It was an astounding uh, ad that they made. They were touting, the Biden administration touting that they included <laughs> the COVID stuff as if no, nobody was already spending over 250 before they can include the hand sanitizer. But in any case, this includes face masks, disinfectant for use against COVID-19, hand soap, hand sanitizers, disposable gloves, tape, paint, or chalk to guide social distancing, <laughs> physical. We're not using the chalk on the chalkboard anymore because we don't, we don't have chalkboards. You use it to draw lines on the ground <laughs> for social distancing, apparently. Physical barriers such as clear plexiglass, air purifiers and other items recommended by the centers for disease control and prevention man schools are a crazy crazy alien place to me these days <laughs> professional development courses related to the curriculum they teach or the students they teach but the irs cautions that for these expenses it may be more beneficial to claim another educational tax benefit especially the lifetime learning credits for detail c publication uh, 970 tax benefits for education so if you're taking higher education and you can get the tax credits for them that would probably be more beneficial than a $300 deduction because its credit would be bigger and it's probably bigger in dollar amount as well in any case qualified expenses don't include the cost of homeschooling for the non-athletic supplies for courses in health or physical education as with all deductions and credits the IRS reminds educators to keep good records including receipts cancel checks and other documentation so clearly you'd like to keep the information again i don't think there's going to be a whole lot of audits based on whether or not an educator has cleared that threshold 300 dollars because it's fairly it's fairly low threshold to, to kind of clear i would think but clearly you still in the event of an audit would want to make sure that you have the documentation to uh, to justify the deduction so keep the receipts have your bookkeeping records and so on so reminder for 2021 tax returns being filed now deduction limit is 250 for those who received a tax filing extension or still need to file 2021 tax returns the iris reminds any educator still working on their 2021 return that the deduction limit is 250. now this is something that software can help out with as well so just you know if you're using you, i think you still have free access to some of the free software that free file if you go to irs free file that you could find that's which are given by third proprietary or or third party proprietary software providers and uh if you if you put in something over you know 250 or 300 in 2022 it'll it'll cap it and limit it for you so you do have to make sure that when you're entering the data you recognize that someone is an educator and that's what should trigger it in your mind even that you might be able to the software could help you with because if you put that in as their occupation it might tell you hey they might get this deduction so use the software to help you with these caps and these limitations in practice so if they are married and file a joint return with another eligible educator uh, the limit rises five hundred dollars but in this situation not more than 250 for each spouse so if you have two educators back in 2021 before that huge increase of fifty dollars then uh, you'd have $500, $250 plus $250 for the two educators. 
file electronically when ready. Tax filing software uses a question and answer format that makes doing taxes easier, whether a return is self-prepared or prepared with the assistance of a tax professional or trained community volunteer. The IRS urges everyone to file electronically and choose direct deposit for refunds. For details, visit electronic filing options for individuals. In addition, the IRS urges anyone who owes taxes to choose the speed and convenience of paying electronically, such as with IRS Direct Pay, a free service available online on irs.gov, irs.gov for victory. For information about this and other payment options, visit Pay Online. There's a link to that here. Taxpayers who request more time to file an accurate return have until October 17th, 2022. Those who have those who have wait they need to file have what they need to file. However, should file as soon as possible to avoid delays in processing their return. Taxpayers are urged to file electronically when they are ready and avoid the last minute rush to file at the deadline. So there's links to this stuff here if you want to check out some of those links and there'll be a link to this in the description.